by Azimio Coalition on Nadco report. After three months of difficult negotiations, the National Dialogue Committee submitted his report last Sunday. As we all recall, the talks were preceded by a stolen election, sweat, tears, police brutality and death amid a steep rise in the cost of living, which has only got worse at the talks were being concluded. We want to thank all the people of Kenya, the media, fraternity, and other stakeholders for exercising great patience and restraint as the dialogue continued. I thank the members from both sides of the talks for the commitment and dedication to national duty. After the initial tension and mistrust, which was expected, the parties jailed and worked well together. Trust, trust returned in their ranks and they were then able to show a strong commitment to peace and reconciliation and the strengthening of institutions and governance process in Kenya. The document the team has come up with is ultimately imperfect and unfinished, but it is a, a good beginning. We have agreed to disagree on the most important matter to us. We made what we believed were reasonable proposals on how to address the rising cost of living. But the government side flatly refused, terming it their exclusive business and further arguing that they got the mandate of Kenyans to execute the Kenya Kwanzaa economic agenda. We will be engaging Kenyans further in the coming weeks as we, as we must because the pain of the cost of living is really unbearable. In the coming weeks, the majority of Kenyans will be carrying the burden of increased school fees besides the many crises in the education sector. Be that as it may, we have come this far because of a commitment to constructive engagement and positive energy and sacrifice for the sake of our beloved country, Kenya. Our team was able to get positive results on a number of the issues that we had set out in our demands. These include electoral justice, which encapsulates audits of the 2022 election process, restructuring and the constitution of the IEBC, increase of the timelines for the Supreme Court to hear and determine a presidential election petition from 14 to 21 days, and a commitment to the spirit of multi-party <coughs> democracy. We were also able to agree on the transfer of all devolved functions and the requisite resources to the county governments in addition to amending the constitution to provide for the equitable share of the county governments to not less than 20% of all revenue collected by the national government from the current 15% and the establishment of the World Development Fund. We believe that these are significant reform mileages that, if implemented, can help strengthen our governance and electoral processes and safeguard the march of democracy in Kenya. Azimio, however, remains deeply dis disappointed that the committee was not able to agree on the one fundamental issue on which Kenyans are united across the political divide. The two teams were unable to agree on the need and the means to reduce the cost of living. This is why we, ha we have described the documents the committee presented as imperfect and unfinished. It was not for lack of trying on our part that the committee was unable to agree on the issue of cost of living. 
Kenyans will recall that at the beginning of the talks, the Kenya Kwanzaa administration was adamant that cost of living would never be taken to the discussion table, let alone being discussed. The Kenya Kwanzaa had insisted that the only issues it was ready to discuss were the reconstitution of the IBC, implement, uh, implementation of the two-thirds gender rule, entrenchment of constituency development fund, establishment and entrenchment of the office of the leader of the opposition and the embedment of the office of prime cabinet secretary. Through persistence and insistence, we forced cost of living onto the table. We had hoped that as the talks progressed, when life got harder for Kenyans, Kenya Kwanzaa leaders could have the empathy, soften their hearts, and agree to lessen the burden their policies had imposed on Kenyans. Our delegation pushed for the complete overhaul of the Finance Act 2023, which had come with harsh taxation measures and made, uh, made and continue to make life unbearable to an overwhelming majority of Kenyans. At no expense to the government, we deployed our team, we deployed our, our team of economists to recommend to the administration measures which, if adopted, would immediately bring the cost of living down. We asked the government to reduce travel budgets by 50%. We also called on the government to reduce the daily subsistence allowances for state and public officers by 30%. We further asked the government to reduce the road maintenance levy and the anti-adulteration levy by five shillings and three shillings per litre, respectively. Our team further asked the government to reduce VAT on fuel from 16% to 8%. We called on the government to scrap the housing levy, or at least make it voluntary. Unfortunately, Kenya Kwanzaa would not budge. Apparently, as the regime's economic policies hardened life for Kenyans, so did the regime harden its heart. We realized that without the goodwill of the top echelons of the Kenya Kwanzaa leadership, cost of living was never going to be addressed. They told our team that the cost of living was a government issue that they have a manifesto and the mandate of the people of Kenya to implement it. This is the Hustlers, the Juakali, the Mamamboga, and the Boda Boda. Our team realized that the whole issue of cost of living is extremely sensitive in the Kenya Kwanzaa circles because it is a gravy train on which many corrupt interests have converged. Cost of living cannot come down because the, the key people in the government are eating from it. That is why cabinet secretaries and other Kenya Kwanzaa shareholders recently fought over oil in the high seas. We got to understand that the housing levy, which even the courts have now found to be unconstitutional, cannot be scrapped because it is a gravy train. It is from this levy that the Kenya Kwanzaa hopes to build a campaign war chest for the next election. They forget that they may not get there. <laughs> we realize that Kenya Kwanzaa cannot touch cost of living because it anchors the massive corruption that has returned to the country. We made it clear that we completely disagree with the government on the matter of cost of living. We made it clear that we will support the document ensuing from the talks, 
but we will treat the hard line on the cost of living at the beginning of another phase of this struggle. We will seek other ways to press the government to listen to the cries of the people and bring down the cost of living. The other ways will include, but will not be limited to, consultations with the people. At all times, we will retain the right to call on the people to take steps that we deem necessary to force the government to lower the cost of living. We also support the document with the proviso that certain aspects must be approved by the people by way of a referendum. To create the office of the leader of opposition or to formalize the office of the prime cabinet secretary, the people of Kenya have to have their say by way of a referendum. Besides, it is a constitutional requirement that such significant restructuring of government must go through a referendum to avoid the mischief that, that may be played by some people going to court. It is also our stand that this country cannot continue moving forward by being undecided. We have to agree whether we want a parliamentary, parliamentary presidential system or a hybrid system. Thank you. End of the statements. Yeah? this particular report. I'm speaking about uh, Martha Karua and also Eugene Omalwa, who's a member of that particular committee. Is it because that there is uh, some disagreements amongst your team? No, there's no disagreement at all on this issue. Honorable Eugene Omalwa was here earlier on in the meeting of the summit. He only has had to leave because he had some uh, pressing matter to deal with. Uh, but he approved the, the report as pre presented by the team. He had not been in the country when this report was being signed, but he's going to append his signature on the report. Her mother Karua is out of the country. Uh, we talked to her earlier on today. She's in Hargaisa in uh, Somaliland. But she's traveling and will be back uh, around 1 a.m this morning. So she has no issue at all. Another question here. My name is David Muthoka from KTN. And yesterday the High Court uh, came out to render the house in levy and constitutional. But the joy amongst the majority of Kenyans was short lived when the stay order was issued yesterday afternoon. And senior government officials today, including Lance Yes, Alice Wahome, have now come out to tell employers as well as workplaces that if they do not remit this 1.5%, then they will be fined and that there will be consequences. What do you make of that statement from these government officials? I mean, I'm not surprised. That is not unlike uh, uh, Kenya Kwanza to try to uh, ignore the, the rule of law. At the court uh, uh, pronounced itself on this matter yesterday uh, 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 that is unconstitutional unconstitutional and therefore even though they say there's a uh, stay my view is that uh, the matter still remains unconstitutional yes. and therefore all the, I would urge all the employers to immediately stop paying anything Because you'll be acting unconstitutionally. <laughs> I'm Chris Oweno from Ramogi TV. Uh, my question is still in line with the question that uh, Mudoka has just asked. 
Uh, do you feel like uh, it was uncalled for for the three judge bench mm -hmm. to extend a uh, grace period or rather give the government a grace oh. period was having this? said that that was an illegality? Was it uncalled for? I think you have to You don't need to criticize No, no, no. We, 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 we don't, 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 don't. Well, it's a question of interpretation. Or, or what the court said. But the, the court made a very fundamental pronouncement that this matter is unconstitutional. Period. Yes, yes. It's unconstitutional. <laughs> I, I, I stay that not make it constitutional. <laughs> okay, thank you very much.